Hello everybody, it's Max McAllister from Traction Dynamics. Wanted to do a little video today and talk about um, a very popular question that comes up here at our company, which is uh, lowering your motorcycle. Uh, this not only applies to gold wings, but, uh, but we're, we're going to kind of talk about gold wings specifically because it's, it's the bike we most commonly get asked to try and lower. So, uh, believe it or not, uh, and I know there's some people out there that don't, we don't, we're not always trying to sell something first here. Uh, we have several steps that we recommend before we ever offer to sell you anything when it comes to making your bike uh, more suitable for riders with short end seams, uh, short legs, or whatever other uh, problems might help them prevent them from reaching the ground comfortably. So there's three main ones, and in order of importance, uh, I, they go this way, and I'll explain it because uh, uh, it, the sequence is important because of how it affects the motorcycle. So the first thing I would recommend is if you're just looking for a little extra height, or uh, you want to get, or you only need a little bit extra height, um, is boots with extended height soles on them. Riding boots with extended height soles. Uh, from what I've been told, there's several companies that sell these. Um, if not, you could easily have a set custom made. Take your favorite boots somewhere to a cobbler and ask them to, you know, add an inch to the thickness of the sole and put a new Vibram sole or whatever on the bottom. That's that's step number one. And the reason that's step number one is it does absolutely nothing to alter the bike. So the bike still works the same, handles the same, has the same geometry, as, and is in no way affected when you go to sell the bike. Uh, so, so for resale, unaltered, that's step number one. Uh, step number two will be altering the saddle to accommodate, uh, uh, to give you get you closer to the ground. Um, inherently, there's no way to take foam out of a saddle and bring it closer to the seat pan and make it more comfortable. So you will inherently compromise the ride comfort by doing that, but it still is the second recommended step <coughs> um, in kind of the three levels of progression of lowering a bike. Um, so there are companies that do that professionally and I'm sure you can get recommendations on the internet and forums. Uh, uh, there's a guy at Wingsoft that does custom modifications, John, you can check out his company. Uh, and versus buying a, a whole saddle you can have yours modified. Here's bad news for 2018 Honda Goldwing owners. I'm going to just throw this up on the center stand. Uh, for the 2018 Honda Goldwing, the nature and shape of the seat does not allow any foam to be removed. In other words, you can't get the rider any closer to the ground on a 2018 Honda Goldwing. And uh, that came from a conversation I actually had with uh, uh, John at Wingsoft, who has had the saddles, had them all torn apart, and see, inspected them, and tried to do anything he could to bring the rider closer to the ground because he also. Uh, saddle uh, fitters and uh, custom saddle modifiers, those guys get literally the same question all the time, can you get me closer to the ground? So for 2018, there will be no joy to be found on this bike to get the bike closer to the ground for shorter inseam riders, so bad news there. Uh, now <clears throat> the next step is in some way altering the suspension of the motorcycle. Now I recommend this last because you, now you're affecting the way the motorcycle handles and performs. Now, uh, there's a few ways to approach this, um, and we're gonna talk about the correct ways. Actually, let's just talk about bad ways people do this first. Um, uh, so, improper ways of lowering suspension. People will, on a telescopic fork bike, take the fork caps off, pull spacers out, and cut spacers down. Um, all that does is remove preload from the springs and lets the bike sag into itself. Then the suspension works really badly, um, so that's not really a particularly ideal or viable way of doing that. The number one worst thing you can do to your motorcycle 
is go buy some dog bones, they call them, or lowering links uh, <clears throat> to get your bike closer to the ground. That is the worst modification you can make to your motorcycle as related to suspension. Now, what are those? On the bottom of the Honda Goldwing, there is an actual rocker linkage. And this is on most monoshock style motorcycles. There's a rocker linkage and then two uh, connecting links that people call dog bones because they basically look like a dog bone. So any properly, no one properly engineers a lowering system for a motorcycle. Basically anybody who's ever done it just crawls under the bike, pulls a bolt out, figures out, they move the wheel up an inch, find where the hole is and re-drill a hole in a piece of metal. Then they take two pieces of junk me you know, metal, drill two pieces, drill two holes in it, and sell that to you as a, as a suspension modification. That is crazy. Don't do that, all right? So, um, <clears throat> and uh, obviously this is a super low cost thing. Some of them are, you know, 75 or $100 or whatever. Um, if you're gonna do that, just drill two holes in your own link if you don't care. Don't, I mean, just go to Home Depot and go buy two pieces of metal. It, it just doesn't even, if you're gonna be that, do that to your bike, you obviously don't care. So just don't do that, it's terrible. Why is that bad? Okay, so that system of linkages and the rocker work to move the wheel and the shock absorber in a very precisely engineered fashion. So uh, people think it's a, a progressive rate linkage. What it's actually doing is creating a linear wheel rate, not a progressive one. At the very end of the wheel stroke, there'll be a progression in the wheel rate. Um, and uh, just to add like some additional body and resistance. It actually matches the way the telescopic fork works, but that's a, a very complex uh, class or lecture on a whole nother day. But just for the general purpose to know that the linkage lets the wheel move in a very linear fashion on the spring, uh, uh, creating linear spring pressure. As Oops, I had a momentary pause in the video there. But uh, so the linkage is there to create a, a basically a natural linear wheel rate curve. Now, when someone takes and just changes the length of any piece of that structure without having any idea what they're doing, which they never do, uh, then the problem becomes you've just created some bizarre wheel rate curve that nobody knows what it is, is tested, studied, measured, engineered, or anything. Uh, past that, these people don't even know where bottom out and top out is anymore. They've moved the range the whole wheel moves in. So then we'll frequently get reports of wheels hitting the fender liners. And uh, so it's okay, people are moving around, shops open here. So anyway, uh, so people don't know where top out or bottom out is anymore. It's just a total disaster to do that. Do not do that. Number one worst thing you can do to the handling of your bike. And now the next thing that is, you know, if you lower the back of the bike significantly, Next thing people will try and do is move their fork tubes up in the triple clamps. Uh, that's, a, that's a partially acceptable way, but then people don't know how far they're moving them, how much range they have. Um, they don't understand, again, since they don't understand what they're doing, they'll set them too low to where the forks can crash into the triple clamp. It, it's, an, again, another, another kind of disaster if you don't know what you're doing. So, any level attack of, any type of attack on lowering the actual chassis of the bike should be done by professionals and not by a uh, shade tree company that sells you two pieces of metal with two holes in it for 75 bucks. It's not the way to do it. All right, so <clears throat> what is the way to do it? There's a, in, so on a telescopic fork bike, the, the internal length of the fork needs to be, the travel needs to be um, altered by a professional. And basically, all of those, the ways they do that, um, any type of lowering done by a professional suspension shop is reversible. So should you go to sell your bike, um, the modifications can be undone so that a standard height rider could buy and uh, buy the bike and ride it still comfortably. So internally we'll do it with spacers that limit the way the fork or the shock will come to top out. So 
leaving the entire chassis of the bike intact as the way it was engineered and designed by the manufacturer. A bottom out's in the same location. The bike just won't return fully to top out. Okay, so now <clears throat> along with that, what's important to note is that uh, spring rates, spring preload, and damping curves all need to be modified to accept this to accept lowering. So if you don't do that, uh, what you end up with is um, you're now asking what used to be the suspension range of say five inches to now function in four or potentially three and a half or something like that. So you, need, you now need to make the wheel work effectively in a 20% or 30% less range depending on how much you've lowered the bike. Uh, now, the correct way again on the on most on any single monoshock rear suspension bike is to uh, lower the shock absorber itself internally. Now, uh, most stock shocks, gold wings, and you know uh, bikes like this, their shocks are not rebuildable. You can't get in them, so your only option is to buy an aftermarket shock. When you buy an aftermarket shock, uh, <clears throat> a company like ours is we will set the height internally to whatever you need it to be at no extra charge while we're having the shock built. So it's not a not a problem. You can get a better shock absorber that functions better under all conditions and get the lowering accomplished at the same time. When the bike's assembled, bottom out will be in the same location and uh, the bike will be as safe as it can be. It will just sit lower to the ground. Uh, for the 2018, since there's a shock absorber on the front, again, that is completely, totally unserviceable, non-rebuildable in any way. The only option is to replace the shock and then again, that shock, we can um, set it up so that it's lowered internally. So, uh, and again, um, that is all reversible should you go to sell the bike. So, not inexpensive to reverse it, but it is reversible. So, uh, obviously, if once you've lowered your bike, um, it's going to be difficult to sell your bike to say, you know, hi, I, I have my... $27,000 gold wing, but it only fits you if you're five foot five or less, right? So, um, you know, there is a cost associated with lowering it and one with reversing it when you go to sell the bike. So kind of, kind of keep that in mind. So, uh, just to review, number one, high thick sole boots. Number two, modify the saddle. Number three, lower the suspension inside of the suspension components properly by professionals. Don't uh, just take random attempts at dropping the front of the bike or put in some cheap pieces of crap uh, dog bones on your bike and uh, making the bike perform, you know, uh, oddly or uh, unsafely. So that's uh, the lesson for the day on uh, lowering your motorcycle. So uh, please subscribe to my channel and keep an eye out for more videos coming up soon.